So we brought this knife through obviously protecting the paw and keeping it nice and simple straightforward it also develops a minor piece so that's pretty straightforward so the opponent attacks with their paw and so we capture the pawn back so looking at the table of the selection processes position is my position going to be okay after i capture this pawn doesn't look too bad to me so they push down so again we capture and before we capture, we're saying in our brain, might be a quick selection saying, is my position gonna be okay? Yes. Okay, the next level down is checks, but we don't have any 
specific checks that are going to be worthwhile putting on the king at this moment in time. I mean, we do have the bishop that could come out and put a check on, but it's not a fully functioning thing because it's easily kind of defended. You could do that as a little trickster move, you know, to get the pawn to come down, which potentially you probably do during the game, but we're not there yet. So we may as well capture the pawn. So they capture back. So now we bring the bishop through here, we know full well that the pawn can come down here, but they can also bring the knight, and they can also bring the bishop back. So they've got options, if they did bring the bishop back, we take the bishop off the board, pretty plain and simple. If they brought the knight here, not so much interested in that, because it's x-raying the knight through to the king, and at the end of the day, the knight can't move for a period of time. If they do push the pawn down, it's kind of blocking their momentum for their knight developing this way. So they're going to have to develop internally blocking their queen long term type gains. So they do push the pawn down and we bring the bishop back. So the little tricks to move, it's got options of whatever the opponent wants to do. There's a reaction that we can pull to it to improve our position on the board. So we've now developed the bishop. So the bear bishop comes out attacking, so we develop our knight. Looking to try and manage this square here. Maybe if there's potential to try and squish the um, pawn or attack the bishop this way as well. So lots of potential. Also idea of potentially bringing the pawn here, pushing onto the bishop. There's quite a few things. It's not just, oh well, I've developed the piece. There's options and choices as to why these this move was made. So their bishop comes down to attack at this point in time. Um, at, well, when that happened, I'm thinking they're just giving up a piece. They're not developed their other piece out. So are they down a tempo? As we've mentioned in the previous sessions uh, around the, the tempo type thing, understanding the rhythm of the move orders. Uh, in essence, they're kind of a few beats behind based off of initially this bishop move because what is it attacking? Were they looking at trying to do the fried liver type thing or something? But they've lost tempo again with moving this bishop again, attacking this knight. So it seemed a little bit disjointed the way they were organizing the pieces. So I'm feeling really happy about that based off of what we know so far in our learning. So the knight can take the bishop off the board quite easily. And they capture back. So they've got an isolated pawn in the center, but I'm not too hung up about that. I'm looking at trying to improve my position on the board. So now we can bring the bishop through attacking the king. Obviously the knight's probably going to jump here or jump here. Something's going to block it either way. So the knight does block. So we don't need to take the knight at this straight away because obviously we still have the x-ray through onto the king. Our position's not too bad. We're looking to get ready to get castled, so that looks fairly okay to us. Um, the, we're blocking the king from castling for a moment, but we know the bishop can probably come back and defend. They go with the queen, so I'm feeling really happy because we get a big gun off the board. Our, to me, our position looks fairly favourable because now their king is actually taken. The bishop... In my head, I think the bishop probably should have taken, but hey, it's not my game. So they take with the king. So we take with the, take the knight off the board. All pretty simple, straightforward stuff. Now that their king is in the centre of the board, we're feeling well, we can start putting a bit of pressure on there to improve our position. We're going to win tempos if we're putting pressure on the king because they're having to move the king rather than developing a piece. So they bring their bishop back, not too sure what that was. So we bring the rook across, putting a check on the king. So it's giving them something to think about. And every time when I'm saying giving them something to think about, it's that magic word which I've refrained from using for a long period of time. But if you ever get the chance to um, watch the video by Tiger Hill at person, um, is it fighting for the initiative? I had it many moons ago. It was absolutely brilliant. And uh, it got damaged and I've not replaced it yet. So I think I'm going to need to get it purchased again. Um, yeah, um, fighting for the initiative. I think it's called that. In a nutshell, when we're saying giving the opponent something to think about, that's us saying we're fighting for the initiative. We're gain, hoping to gain an initiative against the opponent because they're having to follow our lead in a sense. 
it's like in a dance routine following the lead making sure the tempo is right if the tempo isn't right or you're not leading in the right way or you're not being subservient in the right way you know if you're trying to lead and they're trying to lead in the dance then it's all going to go a little bit to pot so you have to have some give and take with chess you have to understand the give and take but you're trying to make sure that you're doing more of the leading yeah um, more of the taking of time than the opponent so gaining that initiative the initiative is where we're saying basically give them something to think about that hopefully wins you a bit of tempo a bit of movement in time so that they're playing catch up and then you just keep that momentum going keeping the initiative um, and keep the more motions going to improve your positions so the king moves so now we bring the pot bring the pawn up now because obviously we're wanting to open up the dark square bishop we're also wanting to manage these squares here because of their bishop yeah we don't want the bishop coming back again thinking that it's own in the uh, world um probably expecting maybe a little attack on the rook but again this is easily defended here so they bring the knight down so what they in the first instance i'm thinking well okay we're, we're actually covered here the knight's covering and the king's covering protecting the pawn protecting the pawn this way so if there is some sort of capture um obviously the knight could take but all depends on what happens in the center here because we might be down tempi i'm thinking getting my getting my rooks linked up giving my king some company get the bishop back here and then looking to attack the bishop so my thought process was that initially if i'm fast enough but it all depends on what the opponent does so we bring the bishop up looking to give our king some company there's no interest in this area here unless of course he moved his bishop back or something like that our focal point was bringing the bishop back here to here to attack their bishop so they bring their rook across so we take the rook off the board no messing uh, only reason being the knight is protecting this square and then i did realize something when we put our rook here that in essence if they played this correctly then they might win a tempo and actually win a be a pawn up but then i said to myself we've been practicing the pawn up syndrome where the greedy munching stuff you know knights greedy munching pawns bishops greedy munching pawns does it actually improve their position on the board so this is why i'm really pleased that the gauge bar is showing that black is going to be winning at this moment in time because i think potentially they're going to be a pawn up out of the exchange but that's just material it's not really displaying position on the board and it all depends on what the opponent does unless i'm playing against the computer i think it's pretty even stevens for us and i believe my position might just be slightly better in terms of the way the pawns are going to be structured so they do actually go for the bishop take so we move the king across obviously looking to protect the rook and they capture and we capture back so the gaze bar showing they didn't utilize whatever it was that they were supposed to supposed to utilize in order to keep that initiative going in terms of whatever strength it was so for now we're feeling fairly happy um i think that was more humanized movement that we saw there with the bishop taking the pawn so now they are are they plus one or is it even at this moment in time looks even to me let's go here one two three four make sure again right so we're plus one at the moment so in essence they're getting the pawn back so we didn't need to lose any sleep over that okay so went there went there went there captured and now they pushed down so we took the bishop now we're looking to trap the knight so the knight goes up we attack it and then we're just taking it off the board so it doubles the pawns on the far side um so yeah really comfortable with that so now all i'm thinking is getting the king up and just basically taking advantage of the fact that we're going to have a passer which they're going to have to contend with 